Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You got Bert and Lanny, the DD here. We're both repping red, it looks like. He's got his Cleveland Guardians hat, I guess, on right now. Rocking oh, the DD mug. So weird to say the Guardians. Once my first game this week, just never rolled off the tongue. Couldn't stop saying Indians, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Wow. Well, there's always a first time, I guess, for everything. But guys, thanks for tuning in right now. Uh, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. You know, Bert and I, we wanted to kind of talk to you guys about everything that's been going on. Obviously, the inflation news came in on Friday. Stock market took a nice dump uh, down almost, what, about 3% on Friday and finished the week down about 6%, right, Bert? That's right. I mean, we've been talking for the last few months. You've seen it. We keep mentioning in our videos inflation. We keep mentioning rising costs of food, rising costs of gas. We keep talking about the housing market, interest rates, and all the things that are causing a lot of noise and, quite frankly, impacting all of our savings accounts because um, we're seeing a little bit less as everything costs more. So we thought it'd be a good time to take a step back because clearly things aren't going away to take, uh, yeah, take a step back and just talk in general about the market and talk about some of these things and just have more of a discussion-based video than anything compared to some of our other videos we've released recently. Exactly. We're going to just kind of go through some of the big news, what's been going on, and kind of what you can do as a saver and an investor out there. Now, so let's really start from the high level. First off, inflation, right, Bert? CPI came in. It's at 8.6% year over year right now with the growth in prices. And you can see here on the chart, I mean, Bert, you know, if you actually just even go into the details, what is the amount that food is up year over year right now? A lot. Um, I don't know how to say it more than that. Food, 10%. So food and energy are the two largest there. Yeah, food's up over 10%. Energy's up over 30%. Look at the headlines. Just go while you're watching this on the side. Don't leave the video. Don't leave the video. But while you're on the side here, go look at CNBC. First thing you see, gas is over $5 nationally. Food index is jumping there. The impact of inflation, the impact of this rising cost to food and energy are devastating right now to so many people because these are the two probably most important things for many of our lives. No, exactly. And, and I know we even have it easy here in Cleveland where it only took $80 to fill up, you know, my gas tank, which I know if we were in the West Coast, that would be, you know, almost, you know, at least 50% higher than that. So you're talking $120 to fill up a normal, normal sedan car. So, um, you know, it's no question that your purchasing power is being diminished due to inflation, right, Bert? Yeah. And what's even crazier is, so obviously food and gas were the large riser, but even without that, in the latest CPI report, inflation was causing costs to rise over 6%. So it's hitting everywhere too. It's absolutely wild to see the impact. I mean, it, I've never really seen this high of an inflation period. Most people haven't because it's the highest inflation since the early 1980s, but it's kind of crazy to see this happening right now. You know, and you know, Part, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll try to say the word part of the big reason is when you think about the amount of stimulus money that went out into the market, you know, from 2020 and 2021, you know, trillions of dollars that just poured in and flooded. And, you know, everybody probably immediately was like, this is great, all this money, this is phenomenal. But in the end, you end up paying for it. And it just so happened to come earlier than later, right? No, that's right. And I think what's crazy too is taking a step back with all of this money that's flooding in there. I know that's a partial, that's why partially that in addition to some of the political reasons too, you have to think with the student loan um, forgiveness that's been talked about, that's had to be part of the discussion too here because we talked about how money supply is flooding and has flooded over the last two years. If you cancel all of your student loan debt, that's another $1.7 trillion that's flooding the economy. If you, I think, cancel, what is it, 10000 that's another $400 billion hitting it into, into the economy. So it's, with how fast this is happening, to your point, Lanny, it's making every decision have to be thought of a little more carefully of what the impact is on inflation so you don't overheat the economy even more. No, yeah, exactly, 100%. And then on top of that, 
you know, the Fed is trying to, you know, battle inflation by rise, you know, raising interest rates. So back in March, rates went up a quarter of a point. In May, they re- you know raised it 50 basis points or half a percent. In June, they're going to more than likely over 90% confidence level that they're going to raise it another half a point. So you're talking 1.25%. And that's going to be you know, felt across all businesses, industries, the mortgage and housing market, especially um, trying to cool off that demand, essentially. They want to cool it down so that price of goods goes down if demand goes down. I know it's wild. It's one thing you have to take money out of the, you have to take money out of the economy somehow. So rising interest rates is the, is one of the easier tools. But to your point, Lanny, all of that activity um, is going to be impacted with the rising rates, with the housing economy. That's becoming more expensive for businesses. Your interest expense on balance sheets and income statements are going to be rising for businesses, your personal ones. You need something, you take out a personal loan. It's suddenly more expensive to make that last minute expense. Everything is becoming more expensive, which will reduce spending potentially and cause the, as you said, the housing market to cool down. It's, it's crazy. I mean, we have what the Fed's coming up this week, Lanny, right? With a meeting, it could be 50 basis points. We've also heard potentially they might have to increase the base, uh, the interest rate rise might need to be even higher. It might need to be 75 basis points because of how hot inflation continues to run too. Right. I mean, the rates will continue to rise throughout the year. And so what we're trying to tell, you know, the community out there, you know, it could get even worse than where it is right now. Um, I know, obviously, we see a lot of red in the stock market being a dividend investing and investing channel. You know, we still sit here and evaluate dividend stocks. We're still buying dividend stocks, but I know it's hard to see a lot of red um, in the market as well as, hey, things are hitting your wallet right now. I know the purchasing power is a lot lower than what it used to be. And, hey, we're all feeling it right now. And, you know, in but then there's the flip side to it, right, Bert? There always is a flip side. Rising interest rates. Lanny and I have talked extensively. We've made jokes about it for the last two years here on this channel about our high yield savings accounts that are not high yield savings accounts about how Ally was what? 0.5 basis points for a while. Capital One right. cut me down to 0.4 for a while. I mean, when interest rates fell once again, high yield savings accounts went away because banks and credit unions and other institutions had were flushed with cash. So you don't need to pay high interest rates to earn deposit. Well, with the interest rates going up, deposit interest rates are going up as well. And it turns out institutions are becoming competitive once again. Ally Bank continues to increase its, um, its saving account, its savings rate. It's now 0.9%. SoFi, the new fintech bank that just acquired a bank and earned the charge, so they're no longer a, um, a pass-through fintech company. They're now an actual online bank. They have a consistent 1.25% APY on their savings account rate. Capital One's increasing. Citi's over 1%. So it doesn't offset the cost of inflation. We're not going to say this is your inflation strategy, but it sure as heck beats earning 0.1%, 0.2% on your savings account. Yeah, exactly. So that's some of the positives that are coming out, but obviously you're still battling an eight plus percent inflation rate. So it's still obviously not enough, you know, again, some of the other positives here is housing is starting to cool off. Obviously rates are much higher, you know, they're over 5% right now on a 30 year mortgage, but, you know, I'd argue that, Hey, if that you know three hundred thousand dollar house is now two seventy, or that four hundred thousand dollar house is now in the mid threes, you know you're finally getting some value, you know, down on the house in case you are looking to buy, uh, you know. So that's a positive for potential future buyers in yeah. real estate. And another positive, it it kind of indirectly impacts us. The cost of lumber is collapsing too because of the housing, the collapse in demand for new houses in housing. So new new houses be, are going to become cheaper with the cost of lumber decreasing or those projects that you're doing around your house that would require you to do an addition to build something in are coming down too. So that is, I mean, yeah, there are still some few bright spots there. Right. And, you know, and then you think about this as dividend investors and investors right there. Um, 
you know, you're able to buy more income because these companies that we invest in that we'll talk about here, you know, you're able to buy more yields because yields are now higher because stock prices are lower. So it's always inversely related, uh, you know, unless there's any, you know, dividend cuts, which, you know, there really hasn't been anything like that so far here in 2022, really since the, the pandemic of 2020. Um, so you're able to buy more passive income for less. And that's why the beautiful part of our strategy and so many other dividend growth investors out there, it's why we look at companies that have increased their dividend through different economic cycles, through different tough periods of time. Management knows how to increase that dividend through good times and bad. They can deal with some of the short-term noise while preserving their dividend and continuing to increase that dividend. That's why we love this strategy. This isn't the first time Procter & Gamble has seen a high inflation period and still increase their dividend. It's not the first time Johnson & Johnson has seen a high inflation period and still increased its dividend. There are so many other companies you can keep going down the list. Pepsi, one of our other favorites. That's why we look at these companies. Um, they may not be the sexiest. They may not be the flashiest, but it's building that growing passive income stream that you can feel good about in good times at that. There, Bert said it right there. You know, you're buying these solid quality companies that have been here before. I mean, Bert buys J and J every single week, so he knows he's buying quality. He's buying more income or a dividend king for less, which is a company that's increased the dividend for 50 years. Another thing you can do if you don't buy individual stocks, obviously you can follow you know, the strategy that I've been doing, which is buying $50 a day in this Vanguard's VOO S&P 500. And you know, I've been buying it every day. And then guess what? Some weeks, the average price is around 360 or like you saw in a previous video, it was close to 380. Well, guess what? It's back into the 350s on VOO. So you're able to now buy the market for a lot less. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing. There's a lot of noise. There are a lot of scary headlines out there. There are a lot of negative things though going on. There are still some positives. And just because there's a lot of noise in the market, you don't have to stop. You don't have to hit home runs right now. You can just keep hitting singles, buying ETFs like Lanny is with VOO. That's a fantastic strategy to lower your cost basis. Because if the market goes down, you're still investing regularly and your cost basis just gets lower so that they so that you know you're still picking it up on the downswing too. Oh, yeah, exactly. And then, hey, if you are saving, you know, if you're able to put it into a high yield savings account, you should be getting a little bit of, you know, better yield there. Um, obviously not enough to battle inflation, but I know there's a lot of discussion about series I bonds. You know, I'm not going to sit here and promote them or dismantle them, but I will say, you know, definitely read the requirements for what you have to do and hold and um, and how much you need you know, to, to have and hold a series I bond because there are some stipulations. You have to have a pretty good long-term mindset too with those. So just uh, you know, take a look at the I bonds that tracks inflation. Sure. Yeah, there are so many different tools that you can use as well. So that's what I think is cool. We'll continue to talk about them. We'll put a link in the comment section below. We've been talking about high yield savings accounts recently. We pushed out an article earlier in the week just talking about rising interest interest rates and the impact on that. Lanny just released an article about how he's using high yield savings accounts to help increase the interest that's earned while saving for a house there and the down payment. So there's, we're trying to pump out other resources too to help through these times. So guys, you know, again, as, as the market is falling, I'll sit here and say, stay invested, stay consistently invested. Definitely check out our channel because we continue to pump out content on high quality dividend paying stocks that not only pay during tough times, but also increase during some of these volatile time periods. So, you know, hopefully you hit that notification bell as well. So you don't miss a beat from your boy, Bert and Lanny. Yeah. And if there are any other discussion type topics you want us to have, take a little break every once in a while from the typical videos, let us know in the comments section below. We love doing this too. We both have our coffee here ready and we're going to be very active answering the questions. So, and if you haven't already, again, to Lanny's point, please subscribe to our channel and give this video that thumbs up. We're going to make it through this together, everybody. It's all about sharing the ideas and helping us grow our income and cut down on those expenses during these times. Guys, this won't be probably the last time, but it's definitely not the first time we've gone through something like this. So just hang tight, you know, stay positive, and again, stay invested.
That was Bert and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out. <laughs>